Okay. Okay, so uh, this week uh, I'm joined by uh, Kevin Jump. Um, hey, Kevin, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing well. I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, so uh, for people who don't know you, maybe uh, it's good to give yourself a, maybe a little bit of an introduction, kind of uh, who you are and uh, what's your background with Umbraco, really. Yeah, sure. Uh, I've... Yeah, I do that. I've been doing Umbraco since. Uh, I, I used to work for a local authority in a partnership, and we uh, built their website with Umbraco, and that's where it came in. Okay. Since then, I actually don't do that much Umbraco anymore. I, uh, oh, what a shame. I know. I do, I do more, more of the grand strategy, but I still occasionally play, so that's where that's where Usync came from. It was just sort of scratching an itch on the, keeping a couple of Umbraco installs in sync. Okay, so has Usync come about because of a requirement whilst you was working on this project then? Uh, sort of, yeah. It was something we, we needed to find a solution for, and there wasn't anything quite neat enough, we felt. There was like, you know, there's, there's the full-on deployment with Courier, but that was a bit over the top for what we wanted to do. We just wanted a couple of developers to sort of work together without having to have shared databases, so we're sort of working independently of each other, but a way of bringing it together. Okay, so was you mainly working uh, remotely then from one another then? Was that not, the reason? Not, not, not fully remotely, no. It was more just the ability. It was the ability to then work remotely because people were working in and out of the office. Okay, so okay. Being able to take the install with them when they went home, essentially. Yeah, no, which is uh, yeah. which makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, um, so you think, yeah, obviously you come from this idea of um, pushing or kind of syncing con No, not content, that's the wrong one. Excuse yeah, me. Um, <laughs> that's the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, document types and anything that could was in the kind of the database just yeah. to be kind of serialized to disk. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The idea was that it, it, part of it was being able to share it and source control it. Obviously, there's a bit of Umbraco on the disk and there's bits on the database, and when they're in two places, you can't really source control because you can source control the files, but then you've got the database bits, and how do you keep them in sync? So yeah. the idea was that we took everything and put it in one, either one or the other. Then yep. you could you could start source control. So we took everything out of the database and put it on a disk. So all of the back end developer stuff, like you said, doc types, dictionary items now, templates, even some of the stuff that you think is files, like style sheets, still have some database elements. Yes, so you, because you have, of the kind of like the rich text editor to drop yes, down. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the structure of templates is in the database, but templates are on the disk. So just being able to keep that in sync really was what we were going for. And that's why yeah. I wrote it. So no, it's fantastic. It's, uh, it's it's something that we use quite regularly here at the Cogworks, kind of pushing uh, like uh, doc types and uh, templates about between yeah. one another, which is good, uh, which is so fantastic. So thank you for creating it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, maybe uh, enough of the chat. Let's uh, maybe have a quick demo or see how it works. Yeah, sure. I'll just run through a very quick. I'll just share the screen and then. Okay, that's you. Have we got that? Uh, yes, yep. Okay. Right, I can see your um, Braco install. Yeah. Yeah, right. I've got two installs here because obviously it's all about going from A to B. Yeah. But it's just a very basic Umbraco install list. This is site A, the other one will be site B. Mm -hmm. and, and this has just got some doc types in it when it wakes up. Very simple content. You can see a standard page. It, it's yep. nothing clever because I just wanted to sort of show the concept of it. This yeah, site, no, of course. Oh, when it wakes up. This is just my <laughs> incredibly slow. Now, uh, we'll wait for that. Yeah, but, just the app pool just giving a kick. Yeah, I've, I've been sitting here for about an hour. So uh, while that's doing that, actually, what what the site with Umbraco on, all that's really Usync does is there's no interface inside Umbraco for it at all. All it does is it's a DLL that uh, attaches its startup to all the save events, mm -hmm. and it writes everything out to disk, that, as we talked about before. So here I've got a Usync folder. And that's how slow my machine is now going. Oh, right, right, there we go. So in there we go. There we go. So this is the stuff it's written to disk from that very basic install. So you've got all the data type definitions. So they're basically the standard things that come. They've been written to disk. And then you've got document types, any dictionary macros. So that's the definition of the macro file. Right. Uh, okay. Media types, style sheets, as we said, and templates. So you just look at what a document type is. All it is really doing is writing an XML file out to. Disk. I was just about to say, what is the? Is it JSON? Is it XML? It's XML because behind it, to start with, it's it's altered slightly. Uh, it's actually using the same code that the packager uses inside Umbraco already. 
So okay, so it uses the packaging kind of service API. or API to kind of serialize this all to XML. Yeah. When you create a package, it actually creates an XML file with everything in one yep. stuck together. So if you ever created one and it's got doc types in, you'll see one file with about 20 doc types in it. Yep. <clears throat> and other stuff. This is, what this does is it writes them out individually. Ah, fantastic. So this is the doc, the standard root doc type. There's not actually much in that one. It's just yep. the root. It's got an icon. If I just go into one that's got a bit more so we can see what's in it. You can see this has got the properties. So there's a title and a body content property on this. And then yep. the tabs at the bottom. So that's all that's written to the disk. And it serializes it out. And then at the other end, it can write it in. So very simply, the idea, if this works, will, will be great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the idea is here. This is site A on the left and site yep. B on the right. Is that if you, if you obviously could source control this, it's much more sensible than copying. But just to get the idea, you copy the stuff from one side that isn't yep. in the database. So here's CSS. I think I've got boot, uh, Bootstrap on, so I've got fonts folder. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, not not media. Scripts, user controls. I don't want to do that. Uh, oh, what have I done? I've opened them oh, all. Oh, oh, <laughs> all the folders. <laughs> opened all the folders. You sync. Don't have to copy the archive. I'll just touch on that later. It's a backup essentially. Right. Views and if you still use them, XSLT. Yep. So all I'm going to do is copy them over to this other site, which is an empty site, but it's got a uh, it's got usync on it, but there's nothing in the site at all. It's completely empty. So it's just an empty yeah. site with usync yeah. installed. Yeah. Yeah. So I can quickly show you it's empty, but uh, you can see there's no doc types. It's going to do that now to load them, but there's no doc types. Yep. So because I've copied the files over, Usync doesn't know I've done that. So I'm just going to uh, touch the web config of that second site. Yep. Which just to give it a kick. Yeah, yeah, just give it a kick. And now that's just going to reload. So all it's doing now is restarting the app pool. So this would only apply if the site was restarted then, uh, or the application pool was restarted. Yeah, it, currently, it only reads the disk if the app pool's restarted. Right, the idea okay. is if you check stuff in and out, then it's uh, it's done it. It's, Fine. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That's done that now, and now I've got all the basic doc types in in this new site. Yeah, fantastic. Essentially, essentially copied right across. So that works both ways because it's just writing to disk. Yep. If I make a change on this site, I won't do it now. But if I made a change on this site of, of a property and copied the files back. You the, see the original site yeah. would obviously then go and get those as well. Okay. Yeah, it just goes back and gets them. So you can see it's brought the sort, the tab sort orders and everything over for them. Uh, I think we've got some templates with some standard uh, stuff in them. Don't think, and we've got some style sheets. So, uh, question: If I say, for example, this is probably really unlikely that it was would ever happen. If I had, say, site B, uh, yeah. it had the the homepage document type already in there. And it had totally different properties than site A. What would happen? Would it? Would when copying from site A to site B, would I get all the? Would it merge the two together, or would it replace uh, from site A to site B? What, if, what would happen in that case? If it's in the same place, so if you had a home page underneath content and root, because it's path specific. Yep. So if it was exactly the same, say you or say you had a root in both, it would mm -hmm. it would completely overwrite the one in B. It wouldn't merge. It would in fact take stuff out of right. say of the of the one you're going to. It'd take out any properties that are not in the XML. Brilliant. So it's a slightly different behaviour. When you use packages, they do what you've said then. They uh they it's merge. Just, they merge or just add. There's no yeah. kind of deletion. No, yes. which is uh, makes perfect sense. You wouldn't yeah. really. There wasn't probably a real use case, but it was just more a, a question out of curiosity. Yeah, no, it it goes back. It does that on doc types, uh, templates and style sheets of files. So it also does it itself. But yeah, it does that on the document types. I'm not 100% okay. sure it does it on media, but there's a slight issue there. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's to do with the API. It's just the way it works. So. That's the core of it, really. It's, it's deliberately simple. There are some things you can do in the back end to, if you want to use it for specific deployment methods, so you can you can uh, make it so that one site will only ever read. It will never write back out to disk. So like, okay. you can have like a source target type method. So instead of this, the default setup is two sites <laughs> will write to each other if you copy the files around all day long. Right. Okay. Checking into source so you control. could you you could set site B up just to only read uh, 
yeah. read those XML files on kind of app startup. Um, yeah. And if you was to make a change and save it, it wouldn't rewrite that back down to the yeah. usync folder. Okay. Yeah, I mean, essentially, just quickly going in, you can see in the settings, it's this bit in the middle. So it's got read true, write false, attach true, where it goes. And that's just, it always reads from the disk. Does it always write out? It doesn't actually, it writes out on attach. The naming convention's a bit odd. I don't know why I came up with it. But attach means, <laughs> attach means attach to every time you save, it will write out when you save. Okay, so that's in terms of hooking into or yeah. attaching to, like, the save events. Yeah. Uh, okay. And the versions... So, I was going to say, what's version... Yeah, go on. What's, what I was just about to ask, what is the versions and the preserve attributes yeah. on that? Versions creates this usync archive folder. Yeah. And so every time you save with versions on, you get a, an archive folder, which is almost a, which basically the same structure. Yep. You can see here, I've got dated versions of the... Uh, the file. Uh, okay, so you so could... So it's very cheap source control. But case... it... Yeah, it's a nice way to easily roll back. God forbid mm -hmm. you made a, a, a mistake yeah. or something. All you do is copy one of these back into the usync folder, take the date off, and it becomes the version that you're now working on. Yep. So that's what that does. And uh, Preserve is quite complicated. It's all to do with this stuff underneath. There's, yeah. <laughs> there are certain uh, data types, how they store their numbers and the order. So yep. what actually happens here is color pickers and drop-down lists. <laughs> Just uh, they put the pre-values in any old any old way. Yep. So because there's no way of matching the IDs, you know, you'll probably see it. If you put an item in a drop-down list in Braco, it'll get an internal ID of like 200, and the next one might have 270. Yep. Yeah, so between is. between two installs, there's really no simple way of keep working out what those two IDs are. Right. So if you create a drop-down list with three items in, and then you rename one of those items, when it goes over to the other site, you can't tell. So what Preserve does is it tries to be clever, and uh, when you set it to true, it will never delete a pre-value from the target. Right. So, okay. so if you rename one you'll, of your three, if you've got one, two, and three, and you rename two to, say, become you know, four, yeah. and when you move that over, you'll have one, two, three, and four, because it won't have deleted two. Okay, so it will only do an addition. Yeah. Um, but by default, it does cope with the non-preserve on those particular five. That's why they're in the config file. It works it out. Right. And then, and then multi-node tree pick is a special case where everything has to be exactly in the right order, otherwise you get yellow screens of death. Right. So <laughs> basically what yes. it does with the multi-node tree picker is it completely, uh, it, do, it just wipes the pre-values from the target and puts them in exactly as they are in the file. It doesn't right. try and do any matching because that's really yeah, complicated. Uh, I then, can imagine. Yeah, and then you can see there it just does, you can turn bits on and off if you want. Okay, so you can just say, oh, I just want the document types, yeah. or I just want data types. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's quite good, because there's uh, pre-6.2, there's a little bug in style sheets in uh, Umbraco where they write, every time you load them in Umbraco, it writes a line to the disk. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that, and then yeah. it just adds a, like, a blank line to the end yeah. of the file, and it just so grows control and grows. So style sheets is a bit of a pain anyway, and it doubles itself if you use uh, using sometimes. But, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically what it does. Uh, the other half I thought I'd just quickly show you is the content version. Yeah, no, please do. So, just remember whether or not I've actually got it installed. First <laughs> yeah. I, I don't appear to have. Right, so this site, site A, has got a couple of pages on it. Nothing nothing yep. too clever. Whereas site B now has all of the uh, back end types. stuff, yep. but it hasn't got that. So, in order to copy the content, this was when I was writing the starter kit. We were just doing a bit of work on the starter kit, and we wanted to keep the content in sync as we developed as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. So, basically, oh, no, I want to go to local. What Content Edition does is the same thing before uh, content and media items. Okay, so it serializes it all back down to yeah. XML, and then you can move those files around. Yeah. Um, okay, nice. It, it, it's actually a bit neater, because it, it uses completely uses the uh, version 6 API, the core API, whereas... It, you think is a bit of a, a mismatch at the moment because there's some things you can do in the new API and there's some things you can't. Right, okay. So, so again, I, 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 was, I was just going to say, um, I, I know that uh, there's going to be probably some people watching this thinking, oh, okay, so this is uh, 
uh, Usync Content Edition. Surely this is going to solve all my issues with deployment uh, and pushing content around. Is that the case, or is it be something that should be used just for development between teams and things like that? What's, uh, what? I, I, I would say you use it for development between teams because there are so many things that can go wrong with a, a content sync between two sites. Yeah. Uh, you, you want the you know. So the tool that people have spent a long time getting that working. This is a, a bit more quick and dirty. It works very well. Yeah. But but uh, I wouldn't necessarily deploy it. Fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, that's, that's, no, no, that's fine. Um, yeah. It would be yeah. I just wanted to get your uh, stance on it as such. And, yeah. Uh, but no. It's great for working together. The idea is is when you're developing. You need yep. all the back end stuff, but occasionally you need a bit of content to actually see what you're doing. Like yeah, you exactly. Just... It's like, oh, I need to create the yeah. content tree, and yeah. yeah. So no, so it's it... nice to just kind of push that between developers then. Yeah, just like a little stub content, so you know all your pages are working. Obviously, when you then deploy onto your live site, that's already got all your content on. You're just deploying the data types and the document yep. dictionaries to that. Yeah. So all that's happened with content edition is it's created a content folder. Okay. Uh, and you can see we've now got. Exactly the same things. We've got our super amazing website folders with content in. Now these are very similar. Again, they're just XML. They're not. Yep. There is no. The package API doesn't do this the same way as this does it. It does it slightly different because there's lots of uh, ID swapping going on in Content Edition. Which, uh, right. Okay. So just stuff. to kind of match stuff up the other yeah. end. Okay. Yeah. And it's doing update times. It's trying to do it quickly, which is really the the main thing. So. Because that's just content, I should be able to just copy that content folder over. So, you copy it. so oh, go yeah, on. go on, sorry. Um, can I still install Usync Content Edition without the base Usync installed? Will it have. Not at the it... moment, because uh, the, making sure that Content Edition runs after Usync is done by, make, by uh, Content Edition using Usync to tell it when it's done. Right. Which means they are dependent on each other. In theory, it, it there's a line of code which makes it at the moment, but they could run independently of each other. Okay. Uh, just the current version has got that dependency. I need to pull it out a bit and make it so it'll run independently. But yeah. without without all the doc types there, it would probably have a bit of a fit. Yes, <laughs> most likely. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, most likely. Yeah. Um, so I mean, no, yeah, it's just nice. So you just got to have Usync installed first before you then go yeah. attempt to install yeah. Usync Content Edition. Yeah. Okay. Now, using Content Edition the same, you can just touch the web config, but it does have a hidden uh, tab. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> it does nothing more than you can do the full import. And because I've copied the files over, that will now just read the disk, uh, do the, work out what's going on, hopefully not give me any errors, and there you go. So this, this only fires when you're using the dashboard, or will it do it on App Startup? Like... It, it will do it on App Startup, and in fact, it works exactly the same, so it'll do it on App Startup every time you save it right to the disk. Yep. But because it's content, I don't know why, I think I just wrote a little... Yeah, yeah no, it, yeah, button, no so. it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a nice uh, 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 user I'm experience. Off, <laughs> I'm holding off on the full one until I've done the Angular JS Umbraco 7 version. <laughs> Very nice. So now B has got all the content, so... The contents come across. It also will do all the media IDs as well. So, it, a media type media files. So, if you add um, like multi-node tree pickers and yeah. media files. If I've got a, uh, a, me, a media yeah. picker and a file, that would come across as well. Yeah. I, what what it does, we could have a go and see what happens. Although I don't think I've got any media on this site. Uh, when when you do these links, when you create a link inside on Braco in, in anything, it actually writes. Behind the hyperlink, if I just look at the source, yeah, it's right, like um, it writes a local link there, yeah, like that. It. So what Usync does? Because obviously IDs won't necessarily match between the yeah. two instances. Obviously, one hundred five eight might not exist on yeah. content A. Yeah. So what it's what what Usync has done in the background is it's actually put a grid in there, so you've got local link, big long number now. Yeah, fantastic. So, so when that goes back over, uh, there's actually a in app data for this, there's, there's two files that Usync uses to work out. I'll just copy these Usync imports to here. It uses these to work out whether or not it's a so it's the source. So when you create a con piece of content on one, yep. it's obviously got a grid on that. And when you then bring it across to the other site, 
it's got a new ID or a new yep. grid. Mm -hmm. So every time Usync is doing the import, it's matching those pairs up so that they every install knows what the ID is. Okay, so it's just keeping a like a log or a record yeah. of like what the GUIDs are yeah. and kind of where they match and up. It essentially says whichever piece of whichever site created the content, it's the master, and every other install of uh, Umbraco will and Usync will use that master ID when writing to disk. Right. Okay. It, it means that you can actually have more than two sites. We've only got two here, but you can have three or four people using it, and because it's got this idea of which where the content came from, it yep. will always be able to match it across those four. So you can okay. have Four people, everything all at the same time. That's, uh, that's good to know then. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's it. I'm not going to do the what happens when you copy media, but it's pretty much the same, really. So it would do uh, the kind of media XML, uh, yeah. but it would actually copy the physical file as well yeah. over on one disk. Okay. Yeah. When Fair when enough. you when you do media, it creates the media. Fi it also creates a files folder with all the actual uh, images in, so you don't have to copy the media folder. Okay. You just copy the using folder. It's got the media in and the settings for the media in. So right, it's yep. just copy that folder. Very very nice. Yeah. Um, so, so does this work um, on version seven currently? Because obviously version seven is mainly just uh, the UI layer and still has version six APIs underneath. Uh, so is, would this work? Uh, the the current version doesn't, but there's a beta one which does that I've put on R. There is, ah, okay. they, they have changed things. They, you know, the, obviously now the data types have changed quite significantly in 7 with, with a, all the Angular JS for you. Yes, yep. So the actual core API, that they're using the new API where it was previously that was the old. And right. so there's a slight difference, but there is a beta version of Usync, not content edition of Usync on R, yep. which in theory does it. I haven't actually really battered it to see whether it does it properly. Okay, so you just need a few more. You need a few more testers then. Yeah, I need a few more people to test that. Okay, um, real. Check this back. No, fantastic. Okay. Um, so, is um, you think um, on GitHub? Is it open source? Is can people yeah, it, help you contribute to it? Yeah, totally. It need it needs people to look at it because I said earlier on I don't do that much in Braco anymore, and so I write it and I test it in sort of you know sandbox environment. <laughs> yeah. Get. I don't use it in real world in anger. I know a number of people who do, and they do feedback, but uh, that's the. It really needs the testing to people to identify things, and it's uh, Lars is doing a code version, uh, an attachment to Usync that does code first. Okay. So it do writes, you know much about that, or I haven't used it myself, although I've looked through the code and have helped him because it attaches into all of Usync's uh, events. Okay. So Using creates the XML out, and then it turns the XML into uh, classes. Okay. And, and the other way. So, Very uh, nice. That's really interesting, but I don't use Umbraco code first enough to say <laughs> how great it is. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so, what's the what's the plans for Using moving forward? Like you mentioned earlier, that you want to kind of write a version seven and kind of yeah. angularize it as such. Um, yeah. Is is that the next steps, or uh, is there something else in between? Now, I think the next thing now is a uh, it's to get a lot of using. I, I wrote it when we had four, and it's migrated to six, and I've picked off bits of the new API as I've gone along. Yep. There's always been there's little bits where you can't quite do it in the current version six. You can't use uh, the new API to create templates, for example, properly yet. Right. And so okay. I want to make sure I want a version that's completely core API because it's really nice to write in the new API. So it's much more stable. It's much more easy to understand. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And what, some of the stuff the content edition does, being clever about ID matching, Usync doesn't do. So it'd be good to have that into. To so kind of port that back into yeah. the main core. So when one thing Usync doesn't do very well is if you use a multi-node tree picker, yep. and you define a content node as your root node, that won't that won't come across properly because the ID won't get mapped. Okay. Yeah. So every, everything else will, but that ID won't, and that's because Usync doesn't know about content. But content edition knows about content, so maybe merging it a bit and then turning. So, it so would there be a plan to kind of merge it so it's just one product as such, or rather than having kind of yeah. uh, one that depends on the other? Would you think about maybe just putting it all into one and then ship that, or is it is that kind of becoming too bloated or too big to kind I, of maintain? I quite, like, I quite like how simple Usync is, and I didn't want to overcomplicate it with the content one because the content one's got lots of juggling code in it. Uh, right. I think some of it is to just refactor using so that it can plug, you can plug content into it. So Fine. you just plug them in. I've, yeah. I've, I've messed about with a couple of extra ways of doing stuff with using. So I, I wrote something which almost but never quite uh, synced packages. 
Ah, fantastic. So it was going through your original site saying, oh, you've got new components installed and you've maybe yeah. got a config tree. Uh-huh. Uh, writing them to XML, and then at the other end, uh, going to the Umbraco repository, <laughs> downloading them. And ah, right, so it would go and then, like, yeah. like a NuGet type thing, it would then yeah, go and very, fetch. Very, yeah, so the idea is you could keep them in sync, because that's the one thing you can't, but that doesn't quite work. But the idea is to get you sync to a point where you can just plug these things in, the like providers of extra yeah, stuff. Yeah, that'd be so. really cool. So... Yeah. Um, that's something maybe uh, a contributor or someone who's yeah. been, who's got time to maybe help you yeah. out um, yeah. that you could kind of get sorted because that would be yeah really nice if you can kind yeah. of sync packages between the installs um, yeah. or in specific versions of those packages yeah. as well. And I think uh, Lee Keller mentioned at the festival it doesn't do membership types. So there's little things it doesn't do. Is that, that because I... the core you can't get the data from the core API or? It's because I haven't looked. Oh. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> so, <enough. laughs> so it's it's a there's just little things. Someone today was asking about relations. Yeah, it doesn't do relations, and I, again, it's just something I've not looked at and not really had someone ask about that much. So I've focused on the stuff everyone uses. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. Uh, that's fair enough. I, I've been thinking, although it's probably just me messing about creating uh-huh. an Umbraco API controller so that you can fire the save across two sites. When it when it's when it saves on that one, it hits the web service of the other one to tell it it's updated. But I'm not 100 percent sure. <laughs> That's just me. I want to, I want to write a web API controller. So. You could try it out and let me know how you get on. Yeah. But uh, no, it all sounds yeah. uh, really good stuff. And it's like I say, we use it heavily here at the Cogwork. So uh, uh, thank you very much for developing it and creating it. And uh, and uh, I look forward to. That. Any more future updates to you think? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, right, I need to go and eat some lunch. Um, okay. Starved. And uh, <laughs> good chatting with you, Kevin. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Okay then. All right. Bye. Excellent. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.